Hi, everyone. Um, yesterday, we were talking a lot about just one neuron, so something that looks a lot like this. Today, we're going to talk more about um, when neurons communicate with each other. So we're going to be looking at neurons, um, one neuron leading to the next neuron. So as you can see in this blue and green neuron here, the, the axon terminals, which are the ends um, of, the, of the axon, usually end up really close to the dendrites of another neuron. Now, the exception is sometimes with, well, not sometimes, always with motor neurons, the axon terminals end up on a muscle or a gland. But if we're talking about an interneuron or a sensory neuron, those axon terminals are going to end up on a, the dendrites of another neuron. So if we zoom in to this junction here between the blue neuron and the green neuron, this is what we see. So this would be the axon terminal of the blue neuron. And then this would be the dendrite of the green neuron. Notice that sometimes um, the like the sending neuron or the first neuron is called the presynaptic neuron. Pre meaning before, synaptic talking about the synapse. Um, and the postsynaptic neuron is the one that comes after the synapse. So remember from your reading that the synapse is this gap between the neurons. All right, it's just a gap between neurons. Okay. Let's look a little bit more closely at that synapse. So again, we have here the transmitting neuron. Remember, this is also called the presynaptic neuron. Um, and this is the axon terminal of that neuron. Over here, we have the receiving neuron or the postsynaptic neuron. And then this right here would be the dendrite of that neuron. Okay, and again, the junction between uh, the end of one neuron, the ter axon terminal of one neuron, and the dendrite of another is called the synapse. So I'm going to highlight that yellow um, and label that for us as the synapse. So this is a really important part of um, the neuron and an important part to understand because it is how um, the signal goes from being electrical in the action potential to being chemical in the synapse and then being electrical again in this next neuron. So we have an electrical signal. And again, that is the action potential. And the electrical signal can't go through the synapse because there's a gap right there. And so it has to become a chemical signal, which is done through neurotransmitters, which we'll talk about in a second. And then that chemical signal stimulates the next neuron to create another electrical signal and another action potential. OK, so let's talk about how this happens. So here comes the action potential, AP for action potential. These little guys right here, these little circles, are called synaptic vesicles. Synaptic vesicles. All right, basically they are just little um, sacs of neurotransmitter that live at the end of the axon terminal. But when the action potential comes down and finally gets to the axon terminal, what those little synaptic vesicles do is they, as you can see, they go to the very end of the axon terminal and they dump out their contents. They dump out those chemicals into the synapse. And that is how we get this chemical signal. Those chemicals that they contain and that they dump out are called neurotransmitters. So that word transmit sounds like it's making a signal, right? That's exactly what neurotransmitters do. They make a signal. They help, they help send the signal. So those are the neurotransmitters. Now, after those neurotransmitters have um, been released, they come to these receptors on the receiving neuron, on the dendrite of the receiving neuron. And when um, these receptors are, when, they, when they're hit by a neurotransmitter, that causes the electrical signal. So something like this is going to cause the electrical signal in this receiving neuron 
eventually that's going to cause, if there's enough of it, that's going to cause another action potential in this neuron. Okay, after that happens, after this neurotransmitter has um, caused a, a, the signal to start in the next neuron, it actually doesn't get used up or anything. It gets reused. And so this thing right here, um, it says transporter. I'm going to actually call this a reuptake transporter. What's happening here, you can see, is that the neurotransmitter is getting pulled back into the axon terminal into another synaptic vesicle so that it can be reused. If this didn't happen, the um, neuron would have to make new neurotransmitter every time it wanted to fire an action potential, and that would make action potentials way slower. And so by taking that neurotransmitter back up into itself, it can reuse it and make the process much faster. Um, now, if you look down below, we have here the example of um, a synapse where a drug um, is acting on these neurons. So you can see here that cocaine um, is blocking this reuptake transporter. So cocaine, this is exactly how it works. It does block this dopamine reuptake transporter. We'll talk more about dopamine um, tomorrow, but dopamine is a type of neurotransmitter. And so if that transporter is blocked, what's going to happen is that all these vesicles are going to end up dumping their contents when action potentials come down here. And then that dopamine or that neurotransmitter is just going to get stuck in this um, in the synapse. And so you can see here that every single receptor has a neurotransmitter in it. Unlike up here, we just had a couple that had neurotransmitters. Here, every single receptor has a neurotransmitter. And so what this does by blocking the reuptake is it increases the signal of the dopamine because this next, this poor next neuron is just getting hit and hit and hit again and again and again by the dopamine, even though there's not necessarily even another action potential coming from this neuron. So this causes like signal overload for this next neuron. It, it increases the effect of the dopamine.